Thus far in this module, I have been using the term digital storage media to describe where a forensic investigator can find digital information and the devices used to store digital information. Let's take a look at some of the concrete examples of digital storage media that you may encounter. Hard drives were first used on personal computers in the early 1980s. The demands for fixed, high-speed, high-capacity storage media have caused hard drives to become much more common and expensive. Hard drives have also become smaller and more energy efficient to meet the needs of mobile computing platforms. What this means to digital forensics people is that hard drives are one of the most common media storage devices that you will encounter. Optical discs became part of the consumer market in the 1970s with laser discs and in the early 1980s with compact discs. The ISO 9660 optical disc standard, released in 1996, is also the base for digital video discs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. Although using CDs and DVDs for storing digital information is rapidly being replaced by flash memory based devices, CDs and DVDs do have a life expectancy of 50 to 100 years, and they are still being manufactured today, so forensic examiners will continue encountering optical discs for decades to come. Flash memory first hit the consumer market also in the early 1980s as a type of non-volatile random access memory that didn't need power to retain its contents or to be wiped clean before being written to. Flash memory devices grew in capacity and shrank in size as the technology was adopted by computer digital camera manufacturers and is commonly used as the main memory in embedded systems. With their small size, durability, low power consumption, and use of the common USB port, flash memory based media storage devices have caused the near extinction of older storage media, such as magnetic tapes and floppy disks, and are now sending CDs and DVDs on their way to the junk pile of history as well. Solid state devices are the newest incarnation of flash memory devices. SSDs are direct replacements for hard disk drives on computers. SSDs have no moving parts and appear to computer users as common hard disk drives. While most flash media are rather simple read-write memory devices, SSDs have active logic that allows the optimization of the reading, writing, and deleting of files. These optimizations are hidden from the computer the SSD is attached to and this makes it difficult to determine if file data has been overwritten or if an entire drive has actually been wiped and for a forensic examiner to know that all possible data has been recovered from an SSD. Because of their small size, lightweight, durability, low power consumption, and low heat generation, SSDs are found in most modern mobile computers and many desktop systems as well. It is likely SSDs will one day replace electromechanical hard drives too. Now let's have a look at how digital media storage devices are used in Kali Linux. On a Kali Forensics workstation, you will be acquiring images of disk partitions and entire media storage devices that are attached to Kali. You will also need to access individual files and directory trees in the file systems of media storage devices attached to Kali. To do this requires you to know something about how media devices are attached and mounted on Kali before you can acquire images from devices, burn images to devices, and perform device-device cloning operations. Each of the devices attached to your Kali Linux Forensic Workstation are referenced as files in the dev directory. There are a lot of different devices in dev, but for forensic imaging, the ones we are interested in are the block devices that we see here. This listing shows all of the devices attached to my Kali Linux system that read and write data as blocks rather than as individual characters. All of the media devices you will be working on for forensic acquisition are block devices. At the top we see FD0, which is the first floppy drive in my system. If I had a second floppy drive, there would be an additional device file named FD1. The loop devices are placeholders used for mounting file systems, like those found on CD-ROMs. We'll come back to those when we talk about using the mount command. The SDA devices is the first and only hard drive in my system. The SDA1 and SDA2 and SDA3 devices represent the three partitions on the SDA drive. If I attach another SCSI or SATA device, it and its partitions would appear as the SDB device. You can have up to 26 devices, A through Z, and up to 15 partitions, 1 through 15, on each device. The SR0 device is the CD-ROM installed in my Linux system. You can also find optical disk drives attached as PATA and USB devices on different device files too. 
let's have a look at the SDA device using the file command. This device is the virtual hard drive running my Kali Linux system. We see that it is an x86 MS-DOS partition that has a boot sector and two partitions in its partition table. The first partition is type 83 hex, which is the Linux native partition that may contain a Linux file system. This partition also marked active, so it is the partition that is booted when my Kali VM is started. The second partition is type 5 hex, which is an MS-DOS extended partition otherwise known as a disk partition that contains one or more logical partitions. We also see the size of both partitions given as their number of sectors. This information is very important if you want to acquire the image of only a specific partition. Now let's have a look at the SDA1 device using the file command. This is the first partition on my virtual hard drive. We see that it contains the Linux ext4 file system containing extents which are groups of contiguous storage blocks that make storing very large and huge files more efficient. The SDA2 device looks like this. This is the second partition of my virtual drive. It is the extend disk partition and is type 82 hex, which means it contains a Linux swap partition. And the device SDA5 is the actual Linux swap partition file system. So we see that the Linux file command is a good way to determine what a device file in dev is. To get a more detailed report of Linux block devices, we use the fdisk command. The Linux fdisk command displays more information about devices and their partitions. Here we see a more organized display of the structure of the SDA device. The hyphen L flag causes fdisk to list the partition tables for the specific devices. If you don't specify a device, you get the information for all attached block devices. In Kelly, when you load a CD or DVD or attach a USB media storage device, it is automatically detected, files for the device and its data partition appear in the dev directory, and its file system is mounted in the subdirectory in the media directory, and a window of the media's root directory is opened on your Kali desktop. This plug-and-play auto-mounting operation behavior is part of the GNOME Nautilus desktop environment, and it is a great time saver. However, it is not what we want to happen when working with media that we must forensically acquire and examine. If you are running Kali from the live DVD, you can boot into forensics mode to prevent any external devices or file systems from being auto-mounted. But when working with Kali installed in a VM or a computer workstation, you must disable the auto mounting behavior using the GNOME dconf editor as the root user. After the configuration editor window opens, navigate to org gnome desktop media handling. Unselect the auto mount and the auto mount open setting control and select the auto run never setting. These settings determine if the media is automatically mounted, if a folder view is open to the media that was auto-mounted, and if programs on the mounted media should be automatically run when media is inserted. With auto-mounting disabled, we will need to learn how to manually mount media in Kali. When a device is connected to Kali, its corresponding device files appear in the dev folder, even though auto-mounting is disabled. If all we are doing is acquiring the images from devices and partitions, this is as far as we would need to go. However, if we also want to access the files in the file system on those partitions, we would need to first mount the partitions. To mount a disk partition, you need to first create a subdirectory called mount point and attach a device partition to it. You can create mount point subdirectories anywhere you have permission, but the traditional directory used to locate the mount point subdirectories in both Unix and Linux is in the mount directory, or MNT. The subdirectories created in mount are used to access the file systems of both internal and external storage devices. Look in your mount directory. You might see subdirectories with the names CD-ROM, USB, HD, and named after the volume labels of partitions that are mounted. File systems mounted under mount can be temporary for one-time access or persistent and used as needed. Linux added the media directory to specifically hold mount points for the file systems of removable media devices, such as optical drives, floppy disks, and zip drives. Remember those? Although you can manually create mount points in either the MNT or media directories, I tend to only use mount and let Kali use media for auto-mounting media. 
Now let's manually mount the USB device, but in mount. First, we need to manually create a mount point subdirectory. Next, I like to make a file in the mount point subdirectory to indicate when the media is not mounted. When you list the mount point subdirectory and see the files and folder, the media is mounted. If instead you see a zero length file not mounted, you know that the media is not mounted. This is a handy little trick that can save you from some head scratching. Now we manually mount the USB device using the mount command. The first argument is the device partition file to mount. The second is the mount point, and the O flag with the parameter of RO specifies to mount the partition as read only, and no exec prevents the running of any binary files on the mounted file system. We can attempt to write to the media to test its read only state. This time the touch command failed to create a file in the mount point subdirectory, meaning the file system it contains has been mounted as read only. It is very important to always mount media as read only that you will be acquiring a forensic image from. But you must realize that the RO option for that mount command will not absolutely guarantee that the Linux kernel will not attempt to write mounted media. This is why hardware write blockers, or Kali's forensics mode, are necessary to use whenever acquiring a forensic image from digital media. Assuming no errors occurred during the mount operation, the USB device is now mounted and we can list its contents in the file system. Running the mount command again without any arguments will show the newly mounted USB device at the bottom of the list. Media partitions inside of raw image files can be mounted using the dev loop device in the mount command. In this command line, we see that the file backup.image being mounted in the mount point mount slash raw. The parameters in the O flag specify to use a loop device, mount as read only, and do not attempt to run any binary files in the mounted file system. The parameters of the T flag specifies that the file system in the raw image partition is MSDOS. If you don't know what the file system in an image is, the file command may show you. If you are having problems with the mount command, recognizing the file system, it is likely because the raw image contains multiple partitions, and the mount command only mounts individual partitions. To find where a file system is in raw image files that contain a partition table, they use the fdisk command. Notice the sector size is 512 bytes, and the starting offset of the partition is 248 sectors into the file. Multiply these two numbers and get the byte offset for the offset parameter value in the mount command. Everything that is mounted must eventually be unmounted. Let us now unmount this block device's partition from Kali. A partition can also be unmounted by specifying the device file name. In this example, both these commands you mount the same block device. We can now check to see that the file system has been removed from the mount point subdirectory. And back again is the not mounted file we created using the touch command, Linux magic.